G'day reefers, I'm Cam the Fish Guy. Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. Today we're at Reef Royale. This beautiful tank is in an absolutely beautiful house, but there's one thing that isn't beautiful and that's the mess under the tank. Today we're gonna to show you just how bad the mess is and we're gonna show you what we do to fix it. <laughs> Today, we're gonna to take you through the steps to turn this to this. Let's have a look at what we have in this area. First of all, we have the chiller taking up the bulk of the space. We've got an RO filter unit, which is being used as an automatic top-up system feeding directly into the sump in the section to the left of this area. Uh, we've got a dosing pump with vessels. We've got a bucket full of miscellaneous. We've got our apex, uh, a UV sterilizer, and heaps of things that have just been thrown in here for convenience. So today's job is going to be changing the plumbing of the return pump. So we've got a more organized system, making space in here, neatening up the whole area, and to do that, we're gonna start by taking out as much of this as possible. I've taken out everything that I can that's not critical for running of the tank. Let's have a look at the sump and I'll show you my plans for the modifications to the return line. The return pump for this system is an Octovarios and it feeds up from the pump to the overflow weir and back into the tank. And there's soft plumbing that feeds from here into the chiller and it feeds the UV sterilizer at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually gonna change the return line up through the overflow so that it becomes a drain. So we have a three drain system to reduce the chance of an overflow and I'm going to change the return pump plumbing so it comes from the return pump straight up into the section that we were just looking at with the chiller and that it has a manifold system so that we've got a number of taps that we can use to uh, run the chiller, the UV steriliser and possibly the phosphate reactor that we have here. So it's a completely different system for plumbing and it's going to be heaps better but it's a big job and I've got to get into doing some plumbing first up. I made this section the other day and this is going to be our return line. As I said, these are our manifold points. So we've got our ball valves and this is going to attach in here. I've also put in some brackets, just these little brackets here, up on the back so that our return line is able to sit in place. And then I'm going to use soft plastic, uh, sorry, soft hosing to go from these points to the chiller and the UV and then back into the sump. So I just have to finish off 
this return line, drill holes through the wall, and feed the return line up and over. So that's what I'm gonna do now. It's going to go return pump up to here. This is going to be a manifold point that will feed the Fosban reactor. And here is going to be where it feeds into the side with the UV sterilizer and the chiller. So I'm going to glue this part together now. I have a rule that I don't glue threads. I use thread tape, but today I'm going to glue a thread and I'm using this heavy bodied PVC glue and it's actually gray, matches the, pl the plumbing beautifully. And I actually find that this does work very well for threads. So good to be able to just easily make a cut using my Milwaukee pipe cutter without having to get out a saw and take it outside and worry about burrs. It's an absolute perfect tool for this job. This wall is four ply thick, so I've got a drill and remove each of the ply as I go. So this is number three, we've got one more, but a little hole saw is getting very hot. <sighs> this wall was really difficult to drill through. Our hole saw was not quite long enough to get all the way through. Um, I had to pull it right to the end of the drill, but somehow I got it. Now we have to start the plumbing on this side to come up and over. So this is our return pipe. It's gonna come through like this. And then we'll go up with a piece longer than this. And then we're gonna go in through that wall. So I've got another well, this one's three ply, so it's not as bad, but another hole to drill through this one here. So I'll do that now, get that out of the way. finally got our two holes drilled through the side panels and I'm about to uh, get the return line sorted to come out through the top but I've made so much mess and so much sawdust I just have to clean up a little bit. Let's see if our little bush template did the job. Oh yeah, that's what I want to see. Excellent. Oh. 
I'm gonna go straight onto a barrel union like so, so that we have the option to easily change the configuration of our return. Uh, let's see, something like this. No, that's a bit, a bit long. All right, something like this and this and this. Like that and All right, this will make it very easy for us to change and adjust the height of the return, which is what I like. And now all I have to do is glue these parts and then hook up our return line to the return pump and then work out how I'm gonna set the UV sterilizer and the chiller up. So let's do some <coughs> gluing. Sawdust. Our return line starts in this section above the return pump. The return pump will feed up into this piece of pipe. We've got our manifold point with a blue ball valve here. You'll see that uh, much better once we take away this white plumbing. And of course it feeds into this right hand side. Let's have a closer look at that. Comes in through this section here. We've got a barrel union. Uh, we've got a red handle ball valve here and another one here. This would be UV and chiller. We're going to have the UV steriliser standing up, uh, probably in the corner. We're going to mount the RO filter on the back and have our uh, vessels for our dosing pump standing in the middle section here. They'll be easy to get to, it'll look a lot better. Uh, and the chill is still in the same place, but you can see our return line, hardest part of the day, feeding it through the holes that we drilled, up and over into the tank. So we're getting closer to being able to tidy this area up properly. So back into the job. All right, so here goes. I'm going to turn off the return pump, cut the plumbing and join the return pump onto our new manifold that we've created. So this is a little bit nerve wracking. I'm gonna try and do it in a way that uh, I can actually put the old plumbing back on if I need to. But uh, I'm gonna start by turning off the chiller. The UV sterilizer is already turned off. <clears throat> Turn off the return, obviously. Find my pipe cutters. My plan is to use these little plastic ratchets so that I can connect our new plumbing to part of the plumbing that is uh, connected to the Octovarios. Um, I'm gonna need a length of probably about, I don't know, around about a foot or so, 30 centimeters. But we'll just uh, measure it up once this has stopped flowing. So here goes, cutting the old plumbing. Okay. So I'm going to keep a section of this just so that I can attach our soft hose on. I 
was a bit silly trying to connect this hose to the pipe without uh, heating it first, but I was being stubborn. Um, given the other pipe is in a more awkward position, I've really got no choice. So I give it 30 seconds to a minute in, this is just hot water out of the tap. Should be enough. So it's uh, time to test this out. I'll fix up the return line, make sure the water's gonna go straight into the tank, and then we'll turn on the return pump and see what happens. Look, definitely feeding through. Cloudiness that you see is to be expected. We stirred up the sump, so I'm not at all surprised at that. Um, now we just have to check for leaks. The next thing I have to do is get this chiller back online. We've got our manifold point already with the soft plastic which is going to feed it. And I just have to disconnect the old hose and disconnect the UV sterilizer temporarily because it's it was running on the same line. So I'll start back in the sump area and start disconnecting the old soft hosing. I'm gonna replace all of the hosing, I think. Um, this is gonna be easier. And we're not using this UV sterilizer for the next few days. So, uh, oops. So, just gonna empty it. So easy to underestimate what a huge job this is. Uh, I feel like we're only a quarter of the way in. Uh, we've done all the plumbing and stuff, but there's still so much work. I want to mount the power board. Uh, I want to mount these on the back wall. <sighs> so much to do. <laughs> we're getting there slowly. We've got our uh, chiller completely hooked up. Uh, the input's here and I'm about to turn it on. Uh, every time I turn on a, a new section of plumbing, I'm always nervous. Uh, I'm always checking for leaks, so here goes. Looks pretty good. I'll turn our chiller back on and have a look at what the flow is like. So I've tucked the return line from the chiller down um, back behind here, just so I know it's gonna stay in place. Um, looking at it, it's around about 800 to 1,000 meters or so, which is where I want it to be. Um, and I think that's probably gonna be an, as much as we can get done today. Um, and we'll come back for round two uh, of getting this tank back in order. So we're back at Reef Royale and we're revamping this whole area underneath the tank. And uh, we've done the plumbing, we've fixed the return. Now we're at a point where we're doing the cable management um, and we're going to redo the dosing uh, vessels. So at the moment, I'm just freeing this power board of the cables and I'm gonna mount it somewhere on the wall here. That'll mean that we'll be very uh, easily able to plug in and identify uh, each of the appliances that are connected to it. And then we're going to get the dosing vessels in place and do something with this RO unit. Um, the last thing we have to do is the UV sterilizer and I have to find somewhere neat to mount that in, in this area. So, I'll start with this.
There we go. Not particularly easy for a bracket, but uh, we've screwed it in place and it's nice and solid. Now our UV sterilizer is gonna go in neatly like this. Clip it right in. Clip it right in like that. Okay, we're finally getting there. We just have to run the hose from the manifold point to the UV sterilizer. We're gonna go in at the bottom and then out at the top, loop around and back in. Let's have a look at the dosing vessels that we're gonna be using. I really like these vessels. They're Sea Torch, two and a half liters. And what I like most about them is the fact that at no point do you have to connect two bits of tubing, two bits of doser hose. Uh, what you do instead is you feed your dosing hose through the hole in the top feed it all the way to the bottom, and that way you can be sure at no point it can possibly suck air in. That's one of the biggest mistakes of a lot of the dosing vessels you see, that they're prone to sucking in air, which gives you inaccuracy with your dosing. Now, I love dosing uh, vessels because you can see how much of your supplements you've got in them, but we're gonna do something a little bit special with these dosing vessels. We're gonna put some labels on them, so let's check that out. This tank runs on Triton, of course, so we've got our Gallery Aquatica Triton stickers, and we're just going to put them on each of the vessels, and I would say this is a really important thing to do. It, you really need to ensure that you know exactly what is in each vessel, so that you never tip the wrong supplement to it. All right, so there we go. Base elements core seven, number one, and now we'll do the same for the others. have an amino acid in the last one. So I'll leave that without a label at the moment. This is actually part 3A and part 3B. Uh, I missed a sticker, so I'll do that next time. Anyway, it's time to put our dosing line on our Kamoa. The biggest change we've made to this system is we've completely redone the return line. Previously, the return went up over the overflow on the left-hand side of the tank, but now we've changed it so that it goes up on the right-hand side. So that means we've got, we will have better water mixing, given that we have our overflow on the left and return on the right. But more importantly, we've got a very easy to use manifold system, which has a tap here for our chiller, and a tap for our UV sterilizer. We can control very precisely the volume of water going through each of these and our hoses for each of them are tucked away behind the componentry. 
We've also changed our dosing system. We've left the doser where it was previously, but we've put new dosing vessels in which are much larger. We'll never have to worry about them running out because they're very visible in the front of this section. Uh, we have them clearly labeled, and this is going to make our dosing system significantly better than how it was previously. We still have some work to do in the cable management. We ran out of time to finish it completely, but we're 95% of the way there, and we've done everything that we really set out to do to make this a, an easier to work on system, and that's the most important thing. It's gonna be significantly easier to keep our dosing vessels topped up, to uh, replace the UV sterilizer bulb, to replace the resin in the RO filter, and it's just gonna be a very easy to work on system. That's it for today's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. We'll bring you back to Reef Royale for further updates in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kevin the Fish Guy. Happy reefing. That's it for this week's episode of Gallery Aquatica TV. Don't forget to like and comment on all our videos and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned to Gallery Aquatica TV for more exciting episodes to come. I'm Kevin the Fish Guy. Happy reefing.